What's happening, y'all? Good day to you. When I left you last time, I was in a bad way. I'll just give you a quick health update. Uh, the whole family got sick. We got a bad stomach virus, and basically, it was 48 hours for me and Stephanie. It was a week uh, for Emmy, and it was just nothing but toilet time and fevers, and it was just not good. And I spent all day yesterday resting up, taking all my medications, doing everything I could to get ready for today because uh, today's meetup up at Fun and Sun. Uh, me and my buddy Rob are going up there to meet a bunch of y'all. They have a, a big meetup once a year where they do like tackle show. It's like a tackle show. They have pros come in and give seminars. They show off the new boats, tech that's coming out. It's like a big angler meetup. I'll be there today for a few hours and taking you along for the ride if you can't make it. And while we're waiting to do that, we are going to do some work on the chicken run. We've got to start building some panels so that we can fully enclose the run. Uh, I found a place local that's selling chickens that are already ready to lay. We've got a plan for three species that we're going to be putting in here. And when I was looking for the best design and best size and everything, I came across these ones on Facebook Marketplace and it just turns out that the guy happens to be uh, a watcher of the channel. So I would rather just pay a fishing freak uh, to make a, a coop. Uh, the problem is it's going to be fairly good size and it's going to have to be lifted over this and be put in there. It's not going to fit through the door. That means we're going to have to prep the panels, get everything ready. I need a beam that's going to run across here. We've got some math to do, uh, but I think I've got it covered. We're going to get all that ready and then when the coop is done, we'll be able to put that in there and then assemble everything together. It's going to be locked up tight a penitentiary if you will so after doing a little math here i think i've decided the first thing we got to do is actually build the beam after just getting the boards and looking at it a lot is going to be determined by this angle right here so i really need to know how high the beam is going to sit problem is this enclosure is about 26 feet long and there's not you know your standard uh, treated lumber just isn't that long. So I'm gonna go get the wood and then figure out the joinery situation that we gotta solve. Uh, yeah, but but I was, I was I'm talking the whole the whole. So what's the whole length? 27 feet, you said? Yeah, 26 feet. Okay, 26 feet. So if you got uh, you basically got three 10 footers, and then you're going to overlap the seams and laminate them together like end to end. So and the glue and the screws is going to, so now you're going to have, instead of having a two by eight, you're actually going to have a four by eight. And then the piece that goes next to that is a 12 footer. I'll have, let, me, let me draw it out. Yeah. So you're going to do, uh, yeah. So yeah, that would work. Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. So effectively you would buy one, two, three, four, five, you'd buy six 12 footers. Wow. You're going to lay a 12 footer and a 12 footer out and you're going to, you're going to overlap it at six feet, six, and six feet. feet. Yeah. And you're going to put glue and screw, okay? This drawing might work. I'm going to send you this picture and then look at it and call me back. Buddy Lance is so dialed. I mean, I'm glad I called him because he's thinking about every angle at to the nth degree. Things that I wouldn't think about, I'm going like, what's the simplest way? He's thinking, what is the strongest way? Shout out to Buddy Lance. He is the low-key wood master. I got the plan figured out for the wood but I'm gonna just share a raw moment with you. Sorry, I went into the Home Depot, but I was clenching on the back end and blowing a bunch of 12 foot two by eights. Just, it was not gonna help the situation. I am feeling better now and me and Rob are actually heading up to the meetup at Fun and Sun. I'm gonna be doing fist bumps today for everybody. Um, don't be offended when I give you the fist bump. I just don't want you to get sick. So I'm feeling just good enough to go up there. So I'm gonna hang out with y'all for a little bit and then we're gonna go build this beam. But I'm gonna need some help carrying this wood home after realizing how long it actually is. This truck, no rack. We're gonna need another truck. <laughs> Coming fresh off the meetup. Yeah, energizing it is. I just feel better after seeing so many of y'all and talking to y'all. You know, a couple people really, they said they said basically the same thing. Showing a lot of the things that, that, that besides fishing, things about our lives, the little things that make us us, 
is is helpful to, to a lot. It just makes makes us more relatable. Sometimes I turn this camera on and I'm like, man, do I really want to talk to this camera right now when I'm in this situation or this and that? Um, but you know, I should, and I and I do because of you. So I just want to thank you for your support uh, and the opportunity to be on your screen. All right, picking up LFD's adventure truck. This is his, it's Ford. It's got the cap on it, got the rack. Um, the bed is carpeted. He does a lot of kayak fishing, so it's, it's really simple with uh, the carpeted bed, slide things in and out. And this is probably gonna be the truck that he takes up to Canada this year. So this is gonna be loaded down with uh, a yak or two, maybe the crispy collector. We don't know. Yeah, I got it uh, rigged up so when we go on adventures. You can be right there with me. Colorado maybe this year? Yes. You can sleep in that thing. Yeah, I got Jeez. it padded. It's padded, in here. it's padded too. Wow. Well, I like it. Well, um, hey, I need to borrow your, your rack system because we got 16 foot boards and uh, my truck bed's a little too small. It's going to be sticking out too far. I don't want it teetering, so we're just going to stick them on top and ratchet them down. Also, while I was at Fun and Sun, went ahead and just picked up some dangle poles. Literally, dangle poles. You know, they have, uh, they have a lot of bass tackle up there. They carry all the Guggen Squad stuff, but uh, I've been in need of some new crappie poles. Actually, I didn't even have any jigging rods for crappie, so I got an eight foot, I got a 12 foot, and then I got you know, your standard six and a half. Uh, but these are, uh, these are nice rods. I'm gonna test them out and see, see how I like them. I literally don't have any, um, any jigging rods. So that's the new one. Put a little thousand size spinning reel on there, a little eight pound test, flare O carbon. Get down there on those little crappie piles and then dangle. Leaving the depot, 16 foot board on top. That's why you get the racks right there, ladies and gentlemen. So you can put large loads. Dad, you could put a 16 foot kayak on there if you wanted to. Think so. You'd have to be a real man to get it up there though. It's <laughs> the only part. That's why I have you. Oh, thanks, Dad. Beautiful sunset. Saw some deer moving this evening. Just a good end to a, uh, a good day. I'm just in a much better mood. I feel better now. After all the sickness, got re-energized by the fishing freaks. Yes. And these are the ridiculously long boards, y'all. Look at these suckers right here. 16 foot. These are still a little wet. They're kind of heavy. But I think I'm going to go ahead and get started with the project in the morning and get this beam built. Got our whole dug, 10 foot post in there. I'm gonna trim it up. I thought it'd be better to just go with a, a bigger board and I can cut it down. My buddies outside are working on the yard. Getting that all tuned up. I'm just, I'm just here in here doing wood things. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is where things get very interesting and start to come together a little bit. So I'm done sawing on that piece. It's definitely not perfect, but um, you get the idea. There's a, there's a notch in there. And that's going to go up right there. And that will be cut down to height uh, to make the beam level. Going across to our post right here. We don't need to put an additional post up here, a little supplemental post, but I'm gonna cut right into the wood with a chainsaw. I never cut into treated wood with a chainsaw? Chainsaw? Pa I just said chainsaw, that's scaring me now. Um, hopefully that's not a precursor. You can see where I've drawn up where I need to cut. Um, it's just gonna be rough in there. I just want it to sit and then uh, I'm gonna bolt it through on the side or screw it in.
that's uh, the sketchier things I've done in the yard department. Looks like a dirty bag of pine cones. Um, we're gonna have to clean that up with just a regular saw. Good news is I've pretty much got all the meat out. Checking out your progress. She's coming to check on my work. Give me the inspector. You're gonna have some chickens in here very soon, my dear. We're gonna have some pet chickens. There's gonna be a roof above their heads. They're gonna be safe. Well, y'all, I've had to use a multitude of saws to get a semi decent looking notch. I got this saw a while back just for, uh, you know, for backpacking, hunting, uh, being in the woods. I keep it in the truck, in the adventure wagon. Breaks down like this, and then you put it in your backpack, or your truck, or your boat. Done. How cool is that? This thing's made by uh, Agawa, uh, Agawa Canyon. The Boreal 21. Got it mostly for processing firewood out in the woods, but super handy. A little outdoor tool. Yeah, actually, don't put it in there. Just put it on the red, main rail. Okay, don't go pull on it too hard. A little posty right up there to the top. I'm using pocket hole screws to attach this, but later on I'm going to take some metal brackets and I'm going to put these on here, but just for now, this is going to attach it. There we go. Wow, it's actually really solid just the way it is. Really happy with that. So the last thing we're going to do today, and this is the key to the whole shebang on the chicken run, we're going to add these chicken wire panels to the top. We're going to start building those. Um, this guy, I'm going to have to build, I think, eight of them, uh, possibly ten of them, but eight good size ones. So I'm going to make some wooden frames, then I'm going to take chicken wire, wrap it over there, stretch it, and then staple it, and then I'm going to just be able to stack those frames on top of that beam. And then voila, it looks like an open roof for a hawk, but he's going to come down and get a face full of chicken wire. That's the idea. Or a bobcat's gonna get on top of it, slip his leg through, freak out, maybe lose a leg, I don't know. We're gonna see what happens. Take me a big old pair of scissors. Staple the rest tight, panel done. The panels are not too hard to make. I mean, it's a lot of staples, but instead of doing the electric fence, I think it's, it's a good move in that regard. It's gonna keep everything out. It's pretty cheap. Um, you know, if something does happen to break it, you know, it'd be easy to repair. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna clean up the edges so I'm gonna wrap these around, staple them on the other side so it'll be clean, the panels will go together nicely. And then I'm gonna stain them later, but I just wanna see how they're gonna fit on the coop and see how, uh, see how my cuts went. Been working all day, been working all day on it. Still gotta let this concrete dry before we create the beam that goes across. But this is what these panels look like. And then these are gonna go up like this. Yeah. We're gonna sit right up there on that beam. Gonna have a nice little little angle downward. When leaves get on the sucker, I'm just gonna take the, the leaf blower and just blow them off, no big deal. And that is gonna be the protection right there. I'm gonna have to fill in a little bit on the sides, but uh, as you can see, these panels take up a lot of room. Now, what you're also probably wondering is, hey man, you got these big trees in here. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna have to really calculate that and then custom cut that um, so there's a couple of those that I'm gonna need to do this one's probably gonna be the hardest because it's like right in the middle where the panels are gonna go I'm gonna keep the foxes at bay and just have a nice 
Rackley Roost. Coming up on the channel, we still got to plant these brush piles, y'all, so I think I'm going to go do that tomorrow. Stay tuned if you want to see it. God bless every single one of you, and I'll see you on the next episode.